Learning ghost abilities and traits is the next giant step to improving in Phasmophobia. However, this can feel like a very daunting task as there are so many to learn. However, don't worry. I believe in you. I know you will learn them and I'm going to be here to help show you seven really quick and easy ghost traits that you should start learning first. Sometimes evidence can be very stubborn to get. That's right. I'm looking at you, Dots Pen. Learning to eliminate ghosts based on traits and abilities is a great start. First ghost trait and ability you should probably learn is probably one that you already know or started with. I know I had started this too and that is going to be knowing that wraiths cannot step in salt. Typically, whenever I do no evidence runs, it's one of the first tests I do because it is so simple and easy to do. So once you have found the ghost room, you're going to want to place salt in it, or you can also subsequently place it in a doorway. You can also place it down a long hallway because now that ghost can step in salt during hunts, it makes it a lot easy to be able to know if you're actually dealing with a wraith to step in salt. There's also other tasks you can do if you do have motion sensors. You can set them up and see if the ghost crosses through the motion sensor, but does not step in salt. But you do know as soon as you see the ghost step into the salt that you can rule out a ray. Don't forget, you can also take pictures of the salt piles themselves, which makes for some quick and easy three-star photos to help fill out your book for perfect games. Another ghost trait that you're going to want to learn first is going to be that Obakes have a chance of leaving unique fingerprints. This means that Obakes have a 16% chance of leaving a six-fingered fingerprint on a door, two-fingered fingerprint on light switches, and then five fingerprints on keyboards or prison cells doors. If you see that, you automatically know that you're going to be dealing with an Obake. And this is one of the coolest things I think in the game and one of the reasons why Obakes are one of my favorite ghosts. What are some of y'all's favorite ghosts? Let me know down in the comments. I'm probably president of the Obake fan club. That with the shape-shifting ability, super cool. But anyways, let's get back to some other traits that you can now learn to rule out ghosts. And that's going to be that mares cannot turn on light switches. That's right. If a ghost ever turns on a light in a house, you can rule out a mare. So this can be very common in many maps so very quick and easy way to rule out further ghosts now the reason that mares cannot turn on lights is because mares will hunt at 60 percent sanity in the dark 40 percent sanity in the light and they are more likely to roam away from lights mares also have a pretty cool ability to immediately turn off a light that you turn on It's a mare. You want to make sure that there was no ghost event that happened immediately after you turn on a light. That can happen. It does happen a bit. If you go to turn on a light and it immediately turns off and there was no ghost ability, then that will be a mare. Hey, so while editing this, I realized maybe I didn't quite make it super, super clear. So let's go through this clip again. What I want you to know is that every ghost has a chance to immediately turn off a light switch if you turn it on, if it's a ghost event that goes with it. So again, look at this clip and you'll see we turn on the light and immediately get the ghost event. So every ghost can do that. This is not a mare's ability, but it mimics it very, very closely. A mare will immediately turn off the light switch without any ghost event. And then let's take a look at this. There we go. That's the mare's ability. So as you saw, as soon as we turn on the light, it immediately turned it off. That one was a mare. The other ghost, that was a spirit. Another fun fact with that is that that actually works with the breaker off as well. If you turn on a light switch, the breaker is off. The mare has a chance to immediately turn it off still too. Very cool. I've had that happen to me a couple times and it threw me off the first time. I was like, huh, is that a mare? It actually works. Yep. Even the idea of a light switch on apparently makes mares very angry. Either way, moral of the story, if you see a ghost turn on a light, just go into your book, rule out a mare. Very simple. And we can continue sticking with the electricity theme for this. And that is going to be that gins cannot turn off breakers. So if a ghost ever turns off a breaker in a map, you can automatically rule out a gin. And this again will all tie back into the gin's ability. So the gin has a sanity draining ability where it will have an interaction with a breaker. And if you're within three meters of the gin, it's going to drain 25% of your sanity. The breaker being on is also reliant on the gin's hunting ability where it will immediately speed up to 2.5 meters per second if it has line of sight of you during the hunt then it's going to go back to normal speed when the gin gets within three meters of you this sounds very confusing but let's go over some clips on exactly how to spot this if you do so happen to want to during this clip i want you to see how the ghost will speed up faster and then slow down there towards the end That's a gen. That's a gen. That's a gen's ability. If 
you don't feel comfortable trying to spot that during a hunt, you absolutely don't have to. Just know that if the breaker is turned off during a map, go ahead and cross off gin. Now I'm gonna throw in another wrench in there because the gin can actually trip the breaker. So here's what I mean by this. If you're like me, you just keep turning on lights all willy nilly trying to find the bone and then you don't turn it off. Eventually turning on too many lights will trip the breaker. So if you're right at that point where turning on another light switch will trip the breaker and the gin decides to turn on the light, then that can trip the breaker. Any ghost can do that in general anyways, but there's gonna be one way to tell the difference with this. So when you go back to turn on the breaker, if the lights around immediately turn back on after you turn on the breaker, then the ghost turned off the breaker. If you have to manipulate the light switch again to get the light back on, you could still be dealing with the gin because that means that the breaker was tripped. Now let's look at how ghost events can play in with interactions with different ghosts. And the first one is going to be, uh -oh. if you see a mist ball or a air ball ghost event, that's gonna be that little ball of mist or a fog or air that will come towards you. So essentially the ghost will turn off a light switch. You'll see the little ball of air come towards you. You get like that breathing or hissing sound. Onis cannot do that a ghost event. So if you see that, you can immediately mark off Oni as a ghost possibility. I guess that the reason for this is that in the journal, it says that Onis uh, are more likely to be in their physical form to protect their grave site. Either way, just know that if you get that air ball event, you can rule out an Oni. This next one is going to take some practice, but if you manage to take a photo of the ghost and the ghost does not disappear, then you can rule out a phantom. So obviously the other side of that, if you take a picture of the ghost and the ghost model will disappear, then the ghost is a phantom. Typically this will be done during events, but you can also use cursed objects like the summoning circle or the monkey paw to summon the ghost and then take a picture of it and see if it disappears or not. But if you are relying on ghost events, it may take some fast reflexes, or if it's a singing ghost event, you may have a little bit more time. This is typically why I will usually always carry a camera on me whenever I am waiting for things to try to check for the ghost is a phantom. Also to get that three star ghost photo, but really the stars for this doesn't matter. If it's a one star ghost photo, two star ghost photo, three star, it's all going to make the phantom disappear. That's the primary thing that you are looking for. On the other side of that, since the Ascension update, dots photos now count as ghost photos. So therefore the phantom dots will disappear when you take a picture of it, which I have a clip here showing you that. So again, the flash from the camera will cause the ghost model to disappear. And if that does not happen, you can rule out a phantom. Another way to really elevate your gameplay is going to be listening to footstep speed during hunts. Obviously, when you realize a hunt has started or you decide to smudge the ghost, you run away to a hiding spot. Once you get in that hiding spot, you're going to be relatively safe as long as you don't have any electronics on or anything like that. So what I want you to get in the habit of is listen for the footsteps. Now, there are gonna be quite a few ghosts that do have different footstep speeds, but I'm not gonna sit here and explain all of them. This is about easy ones to learn, and I want you to learn one, and that is the Revenant, because the Revenant is going to be be one of the ones that you're really going to pick up on really quickly. Revenants are going to be really slow when they do not have line of sight of a player. So there's going to be long pauses between the footstep sounds. Listening for a revenant was one of the first footstep speeds that I listened for and learned. I think it's a great start because of the stark contrast between what a regular ghost speed is and the revenant's ghost speed when it does not have line of sight. So now I'm going to play a sample of what ghosts should usually sound like during hunts with normal speed. Now this is what you're listening for with a revenant. You could hear it was very slow. There were long delays between the footsteps. And that's what I want you to listen out for. I'm gonna play them back to back again without cutting in between the middle. So that way you can hear the difference side by side.
So once again, run to your hiding spot. And then after you're there safely, listen for the footstep speed. If you don't hear that super slow, you know you can rule out a revenant. Then if you do hear it really slow, you know that you're dealing with a revenant and you probably want to be extra careful during hunts. You might be saying to yourself, yeah, that's really easy, but I struggle with surviving hunts. So how am I supposed to get to my hiding spot safely and then listen out for footsteps? Well, don't worry. Like I said, I am here to help. I got you. You can click or tap the screen now and I will go over many different ways to survive hunts to make you a better player. Thanks for watching, everybody. Happy hunting, and I will see you in the next one.